solve the quadratic equation by completing the square. And that's x squared minus 4x minus 32 equals 0. Now it's an equation. So it's a quadratic equation. We're going to complete the square. x squared minus 4x minus 32 equals 0. Let's take a look at this, see how it's going to work. All right. First of all, the concept of completing the square, some of you are going like, does that mean we factor? No, it doesn't mean we factor. It doesn't mean we do a graphing. We're going to take this and we're going to use an, a certain approach. All right, it's a way to solve. We're going to find out what x equals to make this a true statement. And we're going to use this method that we call completing the square. And it's pretty nice for this problem. First thing we want to do is to simply have the x squared and the minus 4x all by their lonesome. So we need to move the 32 over. Now don't move it over as minus 32, my friends. If it moves to the other side, it's got to change signs. All right, so we're going to end up saying 0 plus 32. That's going to make it go positive out there. So that's our first step right there. It's our first step. Now you say, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to complete the square. Right here's the, the, the mechanism. This is the mechanism that we're going to worry about, see what we can do with it. We're going to take half of this number next to x. Now this number is a negative 4. We're going to take the minus with it. Half of that is a negative 2. Now, what are we going to do with the negative 2? We're going to square it. Hey, that's why it's called completing the square. So we're going to square that. So we're going to take that x squared minus 4x, and we're going to add 4 to it right there to complete the square. Now, guys, remember, if we complete it, or we add 4 on the left, it's not a matter of completing, but we do that to add 4 on the left, we must add 4 also on the right. Good old addition property of equality says you do it to the left, you've got to do it to the right. So there's the change we made. Here's the change we made also. That's an important step right there because if you don't make that change, you're not going to get the right answer, okay? Now, what we have over here is 36. I'll give you that. We'll go ahead and simplify that. That's sweet. That's what we got, 36, which is nice because that's a perfect square also. If it's not a perfect square, we have to deal with it. But in this case, we're glad it is. It makes it easier. Now, over here, we've got to go ahead and break this trinomial square. And that's another reason how we've said we completed the square. This is a trinomial square. And what that means is there is a binomial times itself that will result, that will give you this result. And folks, we know we got to have x and x on the front end because that's how we get x squared. And if we got a perfect square and we're going to try to get the same thing back here, we're going to have to use 2 and 2 back here. And what's the sign in between? We got to get a minus 4 in the middle. So here we go. So what we're saying basically is if we were to take x minus 2 times x minus 2, we would get x minus 4x plus 4. That's the deal. So anyway, this is our binomial squared equaling, as I said, kind of nice thing over here, a perfect square. Now, let's continue working on it. got a little bit more to go. Let's see. We're going to take and we're going to square root both sides because, again, we're after x by itself. We're after x by itself. So basically, this little squaring process outside the parentheses is going to mix and mingle with that square root and basically they cancel each other out. So we're left with x minus 2 because they're inverse functions of each other, all right? And over here, we've got two possibilities. Remember, a square root of 36, when we're dealing with an equation situation, you could have a positive 6 or you could have a negative 6 because both of those, when you square them, give you the 36. So there's our possibilities. So you say, Ernie, where are we going to go from here? Well, we're going to get x by itself, and we're real close to it. Thank you, guys. Let me have a little room there. We're going to add 2 to both sides. Now, why did I choose that? Because we got a minus 2. I need to move it to the right. So again, whatever we do to the left, we're going to do it to the right. So the solution, we have x by itself. Everybody says, jump, shout, hooray. All right. And we're going to deal with this 2 plus or minus 6. Nice, nice, nice results here I think they're really nice, nice results. Thank you very much. And what are we going to do here? Well, we're going to, first of all, we're going to add 2 plus 6, which is going to give us 8. We're going to say 2 minus 6, which is going to give us negative 4. And that, my friends, looks like our solutions. Real quickly, let's run that 8 through here. 8 squared, 64. Minus 4 times 8, 32. Minus 32 more, we're at 0. So we know our little 8 is working for us, okay? We have also the negative 4. We want to run it in there. How about a negative 4 squared? Remember, that's negative 4 times negative 4, which gives us positive 16. And we're going to, wow, another negative times a negative. We're going to get another 16 when we say this negative 4 times negative 4. So we're at 16 plus 16, which is 32. 
Subtract 32, you get to zero. Wow, it checks out. And that's the process. That's what we call completing the square. Cool process. Sometimes it's a little more difficult. It's nice if you have x squared by itself. That's the only way you can do it. If you don't have x squared by itself, you've got to get that there. And you could have some strange numbers going underneath here. But the way it works, the way this one is working out for us, it worked really nicely. The even number here, you might have a fraction, okay? It can happen if you have an odd number here in the middle. But this one worked out really sweet and easy for us to see. But that's the process. That's the process, all right? For more math help, visit tnlearn.org.